This is the ultimate test, the age-old debate, film versus digital. This is something that I've wanted to do for a really long time, and now we're here. Thank you for calling b and I'm just looking to see if you have a certain Kodak film in stock. Okay, b &H has what we need. Everything is set. I'm gonna go pick up a couple rolls of 35 millimeter film and finally do what I've been wanting to do for so long. Thank you. Straight down. All right, in this video, I'm gonna go over the process, what it's like to shoot film compared to digital, the cost of everything, exposure techniques, color grading, basically everything one should think about when considering shooting on film, specifically 35 millimeter film, which is... For this test, I brought two of the best cameras ever to my favorite location in New York City. We had an Alexa Mini LF and an Aericam LT with Kodak Vision 3 200T. I shot 200T in the daylight with no 85 filter on purpose. We first set up the Alexa, had it matched to the same settings as the LT. We had a high dynamic range scene with the sky in the background out the windows. We shot the first shot at a 5.6, opened up one stop by one stop to a 1.3. The 1.3 was looking good on the Alexa. We then swapped out the cameras, put the LT in there, shot it at a 1.3. I then spent four days just hoping that shot wasn't overexposed. That is one crazy thing about film versus digital. You just don't totally know. I dropped the film off in the city and it's been a few days. I'm going to pick it up right now. The weight is a part of the process that is not always the easiest, but gives you something to look forward to and I am pumped. I also want to thank Audio for making this entire thing happen. We discussed a sponsored video. I said I have something I've been wanting to do for a while. Here's what I need and that is where we are now. I am going to pick up this film so that I can analyze it and show something that I've been wanting to see for years now that I find just does not exist on the internet. So thank you, Audio. If you need any music for your videos or if you want to start a YouTube channel, you can go to the link in my description. They have new AI tools. Right now they have what's called Link Match where you can give Audio a song and it will return music that's in their library that is similar to that song, which is just outrageous and saves so much time. It's borderline irresponsible if you don't get a subscription. $59 for a year, haven't seen something like that. It has made this YouTube channel grow and put me into this position right now where I am doing cool things and making cool videos on my own terms. So check them out. I uh, really hope that this film looks good because if it doesn't, All right, here goes nothing. I'm nervous. When you hit record on a film camera, you can hear how much it costs. When you can hear the amount of time that you have to shoot going down, you become so much more precise. I spent weeks figuring out the exact right location that I wanted to shoot this in. I went there the day before and took test shots with my phone. I then brought over the Alexa, picked the four or five frames that I wanted to shoot the test with, came back in the morning because I wanted to shoot at a very specific time during the day. Now let's look at some of this footage. First we have a shot from the Alexa and we have a shot from the LT. Alexa, LT. Same settings for each. We were metering at a 5.6 in the sky. We shot at a 1.3. I'm gonna add a film lot from DaVinci Resolve. Because we shot 200T, which is meant to be shot in tungsten lighting, I am going to move this a bit warmer, pull out some of the green, add a little bit of saturation, cool it off a little bit, lift the shadows, and pull down the highlights. So this is looking pretty good to me. Uh -huh. 
and we will go to the Alexa. Add a color space transform, take that LUT from the film, add it to the Alexa. Things are looking crazy right now, but we can see if we shot this at the right color temperature, because we shot an airy raw, things kind of get back to normal here. I'm gonna leave this at 3200 and adjust the color temp and tint just as we did with the film. And I'll pull some green out of here. I'm gonna bring up the shadows a little bit and bring down highlights. We are looking at, you know, an Alexa Mini LF, so you can really push the footage around a lot here, but I thought that it was the perfect option to test against film. So we have the film shot and the shot from the Alexa. We can see where our shadows are right here. And if you're looking in the scopes, you can see where that is. And when we go to the film, it's kind of in the same exact spot, but look at where the highlights differ from the film to the Alexa. If we're just looking at the image, we can even see that it has a different type of roll off. When I'm looking at this, I am thinking I wanna shoot my next commercial project on film without a doubt. This just looks absolutely great to me. Before we look at the other shot, we can see just what comes off the camera. This is how the image comes off the Alexa, and this is how the footage comes off from the film camera. We can see that we see a little bit into the perfs, and we can see a little bit of the frame above and the frame below. So you have you know more than you need here, so you can crop off these exactly to where you want it. And we can also see what happens with this clip when we drop down to a 5.6. This is a 5.6 on the Alexa, and this is a 5.6 on the film camera. The grade itself doesn't really matter to me. I just wanna look at the shadows. We can see with no grade on the shadows in the Alexa, and these are all at the same settings and same stop on the lens. We can see details in here, and in the film, we cannot. And I will turn on the grade and just see on the Alexa, what we can pull out with the curves. So I'm just gonna pull this up a little bit. So just looking at the shadows, we can see this detail back in the curtains. If we go to the film, we start to get some details up here, but not nearly as much detail as we can see from the Alexa. So exposed four stops over what we were metering for for the sky. I like how this is looking. So I would expose the sky four stops over, maybe even more because we do have what looks like quite a bit of room here at four stops over what we were metering. Then we don't need to worry about shadow detail. It's not new news that film does well in the highlights and not as well in the shadows, I would stick with something along these lines. Let's look at one more shot. This is from the film, same film, 200T, and this is from the Alexa. We were metering the face at a four pre-LUT. I am going to balance us, just get this somewhat to a point of acceptable, and that is somewhat similar. We have the shot on film and the shot from the Alexa. The Alexa is super clean, again, because we shot 200 ISO, and we can see grain here from the film. The goal here is not to match these exactly right now. That's another video that is coming, so stay tuned for that, but it's just kind of a quick look at what we get off the camera and how easy is it to get it to a point that looks great. As far as our exposures go, both cameras are keeping in this hotspot back here, totally fine. Film, digital, film, digital. So let's just try to add grain and see what it looks like. 35 millimeter, 200T, film, digital, film, digital. So we're at a T4 right now. This is a 2.8, a 2, and a 1.3. Without our grade, we can see that in the film, this is looking pretty good. And with the Alexa at the 1.3, you can see that this clips out. So it's held in completely in the film and blown out here, which on the Alexa is not that big of a deal because it is so easy to see if you're clipping, where film is a little bit more forgiving. You could hear me say, and 1.3 is showing clipping. So I'm just gonna stop down and we're looking pretty good there at one three and two thirds. So getting a little closer to a two and bring up the exposure a little bit. Here's one three and two thirds and here is on the film. We were metering for the sky here and opened up to a one three. To be able to push around the film like this is good. That's one thing that I wanted to make sure that I could do. Receiving something like this, being able to pull it down and being able to balance it out is 
a thumbs up from me. This is with our same LUT on here and this is out on the street. Balance is so nice and easily. Pull some of the green out. So just a quick balance and it's looking nice. Another cool thing, when you start and stop, the film gets up to speed or slows down to a stop and you get a flash, which is cool. This is just us walking down the street. Again, super high dynamic range scene. And this is before we correct. I might pull up the gamma a little bit here, pull down the highlights a little. Really dark here and really bright out here. And everything is looking nice. To be able to be out on the streets and take a quick meter of the sky and then be able to be completely within the range of the film and have things look good is another thumbs up from me. The thing that I like is how easy it seems to be able to push the colors around. We're just out on the street and this is looking great. And all I'm doing is adjusting the primary wheels, a little bit of contrast here and the temp and tint and a built-in LUT inside of Resolve. Large dynamic range scene, shadows, pure sunlight outside, and everything is looking great. I love it. Shooting for perf is pretty cool. Kind of like what I experience on the three by two sensors like the Mini LF, where you can shoot a taller frame for whatever reason. What I like to do a lot is frame for two, three, nine to one, but you have the taller image to do other things with. Good for social media cutting because it's easier to cut a nine by 16 frame out of this frame than out of a 16 by nine frame. I will just scale this so the perforations go away. And we have something like this, which looks really nice. Nice. That music was from audio. Thanks, audio. Always been interesting for me to see huge movies being shot on film, huge commercials being shot on film, or one of the other big camera systems like an Alexa. So why would you choose one over the other? The film process is so much different. I feel so much more precise. Everything slows down a little bit. You get like a moment to think about what you're doing. I very much enjoy the precision. I very much also enjoy the waiting to get the film back, but I also don't enjoy that process. I think I dropped it off on a Tuesday or a Monday at Metropolis Post in NYC, where they do processing and scanning of film, and I got it back on Thursday morning. So it's pretty quick. They give you low res, color corrected files, and then whatever resolution you want, raw files in a bunch of different codecs. I got 6.5K ProRes XQ, and it looks amazing. This kind of brings me to the cost of all of this. These are pre-tax numbers. A 400 foot roll of 200T is $327.50. Processing is 20 cents a foot. So for a 400 foot roll, that would cost $80. And the scanning is, and this is all for 35 millimeter. So that's $220. So for the film only for 400 feet is $627.50. For perf is tall. Every frame is using more distance of the film. Two perf is half that, so it's using less film. So a second of two perf is less distance than one second of four perf. So if we look at this calculator, I'm gonna choose 35 millimeter, which will be four perf, 24 frames per second, 400 feet, and that will get us four minutes and 26 seconds. $140 per minute that it's costing you to hit record on that camera. If we go down to two perf, we have almost nine minutes. That costs about half. So if you know that you're shooting two, three, nine to one, you just shoot two perf and get twice as much or half the cost. Other costs associated with this is the camera itself. I had Greenwood Cine in Brooklyn service this rental. They have a collection of lenses that's really nice and continuously growing. And that's kind of what got me to keep an eye on them. And I've just worked with them in the past. The LT is about $2,000 a day. The LT is a little bit more expensive. So you can get other 35 millimeter cameras or you could shoot on 16. You can get a more affordable 16 camera. You can shoot for longer on 400 feet so the cost per minute goes down. So we have $2,000 for the camera. With that comes insurance. I used uh, Master Primes on here and with that camera and the Master Primes, the insurance was 
about $650. In addition to that, you need a loader and an AC. Things can add up, but what I'm seeing right here is absolutely beautiful and pushing me to push for shooting on film moving forward on a couple projects that I have coming up. I want to experiment with a smaller, lighter weight, 35 millimeter camera. I'm glad I used the LT because it's an awesome camera to work with, but it is extremely heavy. Heavy is good for the handheld work, but not easy to carry around. You need a team to support you and like definitely an easy rig. First AC that I had, Arjun was amazing. He mentioned that the LT was one of his favorite cameras to work on and the process was just so smooth. If you ever need an AC in New York, he was amazing to work with and made me feel real comfortable doing this test with, you know, just the two of us where we could have been doing this test with like 10 people. Also Greenwood Cine, smooth process working with them to get this equipment. And I uh, also just have to thank Audio for helping make this test happen. It's always something that I wanted to do. So thank you Audio for doing that and for providing the music and sound effects for my videos. Uh, that's been a good thing for this YouTube channel. Moving forward, I have a couple rolls of other stocks and I will take a look at those. I will also go deeper on matching these clips, build the look on the Alexa to match it to the film and make that be available for anybody else that may want it. So stay tuned for that. A lot more on the way. Peace. One more thing. If you're not in the Discord, you should definitely join. It's a great community, so many smart people. We have a contest coming up. I'll see you there. Peace.